Radio East River, our station, our talent, and our people. Radio East River, our station, our talent, our people. What's up, ons by 064-536-9095. Talk to us, the dang rick here. Tune in to the leading internet radio station in the mother city, Radio Easter River. For more information, log on to our website, which is www.radioeasterriver.co.za. You know you can make big plans for the future. And then one day you realize that you're living your life in vain. But if you'll do as millions have done, Ask God to give you life's only meaning. In Jesus, you can have everything. Yes, you can. I have everything that I need to make me happy. Praise God, yes, I do. I have seen and he'll show me the way yes he does for he saved me and he gave me life eternal and now I Sing 
tired of saying it. He saved me. And he gave me life eternal. And now I have everything. And now Radio East River, our station, our talent, and our people. God bless you and welcome to this morning's early edition of the Message of the Hour with me, Brother Elmer. May the Lord bless you and may He be with you. Thank you for tuning in once again this morning. And thank you for those that are up and awake, that have just tuned in wherever in the world you are. We welcome you to the leading internet radio station in Cape Town. May the Lord bless you, may be with you, is our prayer, our wish. You can catch us live on Facebook on the Radio East of Ever page. You can catch us on the Radio East of Ever TikTok pray, profile, or you can listen on www.radioeastofever.co.za. You can also download the Radio East of Ever app on the Play Store. May the Lord just bless you once again, as we say. And we as Christians are called to bless and not to curse. That is what our Master Jesus Christ commanded us, that when people curse us, we should rather bless them instead. And when we bless, the blessings come back to us. So, yes, we want to speak this morning from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 30. And we want to read one verse. We will be referring to several verses throughout this morning's broadcast. But for a foundational background, we will read Deuteronomy 30 and we shall read verse 19. So for those of you that have your Bibles already this morning, you can turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy, which is the fifth, the fifth book of the Bible. And this is Moses addressing the people of Israel. And he's saying, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life that thou and that thou that both thou and thy seed may live, that thou mayest love the Lord thy God, and that thou mayest obey his voice, and that thou mayest cleave unto him, for he is thy life in the length of thy days, that thou mayest dwell in the land which the Lord swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. So, beloved, we want to speak this morning about the blessing and the curse. Now, this is a foundational biblical topic which we find from the very beginning. We find in the book of Genesis, which is the first book of the Bible. And the book Genesis, the name Genesis means the beginning or the origin. Hallelujah. And we see right in Genesis chapter 1, even after God created man, that God blessed them. Hallelujah. So God was the first blesser. Hallelujah. And God pronounced the blessing. Yes. And God never cursed man after the fall. We see God allowed punishment to come upon him. But God specifically put a curse on the serpent. Yes. Now man is made in the image of God Almighty. And when, when, when God has blessed something, it is blessed indeed. And what God is blessed, nobody can curse. And what God is cursed, nobody can bless. Praise the name of the Lord. And then throughout the Bible, we find passages that speak about curses as well. Like as we just mentioned, the book of Genesis means the beginning. Right in the beginning, we see blessings being pronounced. And we see also curses being pronounced. And if we go throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, we find several passages that refer to <coughs> to blessings and to curses. Now it's very important that we have the right understanding with regards to blessings and to curses. 
Now, many people have the wrong perception that blessing is connected to a large sum of money and curses is connected to a shortage of money. But that is not always the case. The Bible teaches us in the book of Ecclesiastes that there are righteous people with whom it goes according to the deeds of the unrighteous. And there's unrighteous people with whom it goes according to the deeds of the righteous people. So you can have people that are good, righteous, holy people that are wealthy and prosperous, but then you can also have wicked people, evil people that are also wealthy, rich and prosperous when it comes to material goods. And material goods are not always a sign of God's favor, God's approval, or God's blessing. Not at all times. There are times when God can do that, but it is not always a sign of that. Many times people drift far away from God, and then they start to live ungodly lives, and they forget God. And then it also seems that the wicked is prospering. And if you go into the book of Psalms, chapter number 78, there was a man by the name of Asaph, and he was writing and he was complaining about this matter, that why is it that the wicked people are prospering? And he that is in sea and righteous with God, he's suffering. And <coughs> so it is many times the case with people that are genuine and sincere in their walk with God, that many times we go through suffering, we go through shortages, we go through difficulties, we go through, through times of lack. But it was the Apostle Paul that was writing in his epistle to the Philippians. And he was saying that he knows to have in abundance, but he also knows to have in nothing. He also knows what it is like to suffer hunger. So there is a balance in life. Hallelujah. And we should take note that material prosperity is not always a sign of the blessing of God. Although God is able to do such, but it's not always a sign because there are people that... Uh, generate their wealth from doing th things that are evil and abominable and unacceptable in the sight of God. But here we see Moses, the great leader of the people of Israel, the great prophet that God raised up and sent to his people to deliver them out of the hand of Pharaoh. And the Lord sent him and the Lord went with him. And then the Lord used him with a mighty hand, hallelujah, to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. And if you go into Deuteronomy chapter number 27, then you read that he's speaking about these two mountains. And these two mountains, one representing the blessing and the other one representing the curse. And then he continues in Deuteronomy 28, and he speaks once again for the blessing for obedience and for the curses for disobedience. And that is where the link comes in. The blessing is connected to obedience. Now many people want to be blessed, but they do not want to obey. And then there are those that become cursed because of their own disobedience. So many times it's not someone else that's cursing you, but it is you bringing curses upon yourself because of disobedience to the word of God. Now there were these two mountains that he speaks of. And the one was called Mount Gerizim and the other one was called Mount Ebal. And he was saying in Deuteronomy 27 verse 11, And Moses charged the people the same day, saying, These shall stand upon, upon Mount Gerizim to bless the people when you come over Jordan, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, and Issachar, and Joseph, and Benjamin. And these shall stand upon Mount Ebal to curse Reuben, Gad, Asher, and Zebulun, Dan, and Naphtali. And the Levites shall speak, and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Curse be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsmen, and put it in the secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. Now we can continue in the reading. <coughs> we can see different curses being pronounced for disobedience. So that is the link in the Bible. When we obey, we become blessed. And when we disobey, we bring curses upon ourselves. And if you read Deuteronomy 28, we see a detailed description of the different blessings that God promises if people hearken unto His voice diligently, if the people of God listen to what God has to say. And God says, And all His blessings shall come 
on thee and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shalt be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall thy basket and thy store. Blessed sh shalt thou be when thou comest in and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven days. The ways. The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouses and in all thou settest thine hand unto. And he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee in an holy people unto himself. He hath sworn unto thee if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk on in his ways. And all the people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and thou shall be they shall be afraid of thee. Now we can continue and continue, and then we get to verse 16, where he speaks about the curses. But it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Curses shall thou be in the city, and curses shall thou be in the field. Cursed shall thou be thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Cursed shall thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Now, beloved, these are not uh, pleasant works to read, but it's also contained in the Holy Bible. And we must face the reality that there is not just blessings, but there is also curses. <coughs> curses of which the Bible speaks about. Now, this is God addressing the people of Israel, but we can also learn from them because the Apostle Paul was writing in Romans chapter 11 that they are the natural branch, and if God have not spared the natural branch, then he shall not spare thee also. So, God, every time when Israel obeyed God, we see God blessing them, God fighting for them, God being in their midst. But the moment they transgressed and they broke their covenant with God and they started to worship other gods, we see that the wrath of God was poured out upon them and God withdrew his presence and God allowed the enemy to come in and to overtake them and to destroy them and to take them captive and to besiege them. So that is a lesson that we can learn from it, yes. But we want to speak from a deeper point of view this morning about the blessing and as we say that the blessing does not necessarily just uh, mean uh, material goods but the blessing is something far more beyond that and we see that when God blesses God always uses words to bless hallelujah and it is that words hallelujah that releases the blessing so the blessing is the word of God and <coughs> the blessing is what allows you or enables you to receive favor from God, hallelujah, and for God to make things possible in your life. Now the Bible says in John chapter 9 or John chapter 1 verse 18 that the law came through Moses and we were just reading from the law now from Deuteronomy, but grace and truth came from Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Now the book of Deuteronomy is called the book of remembrance. So this is a book where the people are being reminded about God and what God has done for them. And it is important that Christians should often meditate about the Lord, to think about Him, to remember the Lord and what He has done for them. It is very, very important that we don't forget God, that we don't forget what God has done, but that we should remember Him. Hallelujah. And even David was writing throughout the Psalms. How did he sometimes during the night times would lay upon his bed and then he would think about God. He would remember God. And that is also what we should do. We should always remember God. We should not forget him. Yes. And the Bible says that those that forget God, that their end will be in Hades. Their end will be in hell. Their end will be destruction. Those who forget God. It's so important that we must remember him. Hallelujah. And for Christians in the New Testament, we remember the Lord when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Now we know the Lord before he was crucified the night before. We know that 
He was celebrating the Pascha, the Passover with his disciples. And he was doing this by breaking the bread, sharing the wine, and telling them to do this in his remembrance. Hallelujah. So when we are celebrating the Lord's Supper, we are doing it to remember what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. The bread symbolizing his body, the wine symbolizing his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for the forgiveness of our sins. So we should not forget the Lord and what he has done for us because it was a great thing that he did for us on the cross of Calvary. It was just not another crucifixion. It was just not another death. It was just not another man hanging on the cross, but it was the Lord of glory hanging for the sins of the world. And when John the Baptist looked at Jesus in John chapter 1 verse 29, he was saying, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. He was the ultimate sacrifice. He was the supreme sacrifice. He was not just another man. Hallelujah. He was a supernatural man. He was born through supernatural conception. The Bible says in Isaiah 7 verse 14, Behold the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. That is when it's interpreted, it means God with us. Hallelujah. So it was not just another man, but it was the God man. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and verse 18. Praise the name of the Lord. So what, what Jesus did on the cross was so much different than what the other man did on the cross. There was one man to his left and one man to his right. They were also crucified. But they died as ordinary men. They died because they deserved to die. But Jesus did not deserve what was coming upon him. But it all happened that the scripture might be fulfilled. That <coughs> he was counted with the criminals. Yes, Isaiah 53. Jesus had to be numbered with the criminals. He had to be seen as a criminal. Because he took our crimes, our sins, our transgressions, our iniquities. He took upon himself. And he was numbered with the transgressors, the Bible says in Isaiah 53. But when the other two died, they died as normal men. They died as criminals, hallelujah. But when Jesus died, he died for the sins of the world. When his blood flowed from his veins, it wasn't another man's blood flowing, but it was the blood of God flowing himself. The Bible says in, the, in Acts chapter 20 verse 28, that God has redeemed the church through his own blood. And when Jesus died on the cross, he freed us from the curse of the law. Now all of us are guilty of breaking God's law. And we just read in Deuteronomy what were the consequences of breaking God's law. And as we see that it was terrible due to all the curses, it was pronounced over the transgressors. But when Jesus died on the cross, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. If you read uh, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 13. Paul says that Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. So all the punishments that was due to us, he took upon himself. The Bible says in Isaiah 53 verse 5, For he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Praise the name of the Lord. So he took the punishment upon himself. He took the judgment upon himself. And he did it for us because he loves us. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 that God commends his love to us in this, that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. Praise the name of the Lord. So he did it because he loved us. He took our iniquities upon himself. And he took also the punishment for that iniquities upon himself. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is exactly what Jesus did for us on the cross of Calvary. Now, the death of Jesus brought not just the redemption from the curse, but it also brought the blessing of Abraham to us, the Gentiles. And if we go back into the book of Galatians, chapter number 3 and chapter number 4, where the Apostle Paul speaks about this matter. He speaks about the blessing of Abraham. Hallelujah. And he says in verse 14, that the blessing of Abraham might come through come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Hallelujah. Now God made a promise to Abraham about the blessing. In Genesis chapter 12, we see God calling Abraham 
out of his father's house, out of his family, out of his country, and God telling him to go to a land that God would show him. And then God telling that in blessing I will bless thee. Hallelujah. And God said, in you shall all, in your seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. If we go to Genesis chapter 12, we can find that exact wording. The Lord says, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curse thee, and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. In Abraham, hallelujah. And when God was speaking these words, that th- in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed, <coughs> God was referring specifically that the blessing would come through the seed of Abraham. The Bible says in verse 16, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to the seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. So all the families of the earth would be blessed through the seed of Abraham. Hallelujah. Through the descendant of Abraham. And we were speaking on Thursday evening's broadcast about biblical genealogy. And we were pointing out in the different genealogies of Matthew, of Genesis, and so forth, we proved out that Jesus is actually the seed of Abraham or the descendant of Abraham. And God promised that he would bless through the seed of Abraham, the singular seed, the one seed through Jesus Christ. He would bless all the inhabitants of the earth. Hallelujah. And all inhabitants of the earth can be blessed if they accept Jesus Christ as their own personal Savior. And if they believe and accept in what he has done on the cross of Calvary by laying down his life as the ultimate sacrifice, as the supreme sacrifice. Hallelujah. And giving himself as, as a ransom for many, praise the name of the Lord, by shedding his blood and laying down his life. Jesus says in John chapter 10, that nobody lays my, uh, takes my life from me, but I lay it down of my own self. I have power to lay it down and have power to take it back up again. This commandment have I received of my Father. Hallelujah. And when Jesus did that, by laying down his life, He brought about the blessing, hallelujah. And that blessing is the blessing of the forgiveness of sins. And if you go into Romans chapter number 4, the Apostle Paul was speaking about this matter, and he was quoting from the book of Psalms. He was speaking from the book of Psalms, chapter number 32, and he was speaking about this blessing, hallelujah. He says in verse 16 of Romans 4, he says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace, to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Hallelujah. And then if you go to chapter number 1, or to verse number 1, he says, What shall we then say that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found? For if Abraham were justified by works, ye have way of the glory, but not before God. For what say of the scripture? Abraham believed God and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not to be reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that worketh not but believeth of him that justified the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works. <coughs> Saying, blessed are those whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And through the death of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, we have been made righteous without our own works. We've been made righteous through the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. And because of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary, our iniquities are forgiven and our sins are covered. Hallelujah. And God does not impute this unrighteousness to us anymore. But he now sees us as blessed when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. And when God looks at you, he looks at you through Christ. When you are in Christ, God doesn't see you. God sees Christ. Hallelujah. Because you are hidden in Christ. Praise the name of the Lord. So that is what the blessing is really all about. It is about accepting the Lord Jesus Christ and receiving the forgiveness of sins and everlasting life. There is no greater blessing than that. Hallelujah. The greatest blessing there is, 
is to have Jesus in your life. We listened to a beautiful song in the beginning of the introductory. It says that now I have everything. And if you have Jesus, you surely do have everything. Hallelujah. He says, I had nothing but doubt and confusion. I had nothing but heartache and sorrow. But then I met Jesus. Hallelujah. And he gave me life's only true meaning. And now I have everything. I have everything to make me happy. I have Jesus and he will show me the way. It is better to die poor as a beggar, but to die in Christ is to have riches forever. The Bible speaks of such a person by the name of Lazarus and he died as a poor beggar. But when he died, the angels came and they took him and they escorted him to the bosom of Abraham. Praise the name of the Lord. And that is really to be blessed forever. I'd rather die poor but die with Christ. (coughs) <coughs> than to die rich and to die without Christ. Now we're going to take a break quickly. We're going to listen to that song again. Now I have everything. May the Lord bless you. We'll be back shortly. Radio East River, our station, our talent, and our people. I had nothing but heartaches, oh, and trouble. I was living my lifetime in vain. Yes, I was. I had nothing but doubt. Hope and confusion But now I have everything Oh yes I do, yes, yes I have everything Oh that I need To make me happy Yes I do I have Jesus, and He'll show me the way. Yes, He has saved me, and He gave me life eternal. Yes, He did. And now I have a You know you can make big plans for the future. And then one day you realize that you're living your life in vain. But if you'll do as millions have done, Ask God to give you life's only meaning. In Jesus, you can have everything. Yes, you can. I have everything that I need to make me happy. Praise God, yes, I do. I have Jesus, 
And he'll show me the way. Yes, he does. For he saved me. And he gave me life eternal. get tired of saying it. He saved me. And he gave me life eternal. And now I have everything. And now Join us for a celebration like no other on Saturday, the 2nd November 2024 from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. as Zeeuwen View Center turns two years old. Get ready to spend and win exciting prizes which will be drawn every 30 minutes starting at 9 a.m. You could win hampers, vouchers and so much more. Your favorite DJs from Radio Easter will keep the birthday vibes going with fantastic music. And there will be plenty of special offers throughout the day. Don't miss out on the fun. Let's celebrate, Let's celebrate together. together. God bless you and welcome back to this morning's broadcast of the message of the hour. So we're speaking this morning about the blessing and the curse. Praise the name of the Lord. And these two uh, themes or topics are clearly defined throughout the Bible. Now, a curse we can define as God's judgment for disobedience on sin and idolatry. Curses are also the consequences of breaking God's covenant. Hallelujah. But when we look at blessings, praise the name of the Lord. A blessing is manifested as God's favor and goodwill towards peoples or nations. Now, God can bless people in material goods as well. There's no doubt about that. God is the creator of all the worlds, the spiritual world and the material world. And we see, for instance, with Abraham, the Bible even says that the Lord blessed him with cattle and with silver and with gold. The Bible speaks, for instance, about Job, that he was richer than all the, the children or the people of the East. So it is possible that God can bless with material goods, no doubt about that. However, material good should not be the standard by which we measure God's blessing. No, not at all. Because there are people out there also that are performing wicked things, that are selling illegal things or doing illegal business, and they are also making way more money than somebody that's living a good life, a righteous life before God. And we should also be aware of false gospels. And there is a false gospel that is circulating the globe for a few decades now, known as the prosperity gospel, that is being uh, presented as God can bless you with material goods if you will give money to the church. Now, we should be very careful in this regard as well. Because the Apostle Paul writes in Galatians chapter 1, that if anybody comes, even they themselves, or an angel from heaven, and preaches a gospel different than the one that they've already preached, let him be a curse. So the New Testament does speak, hallelujah, it speaks about different blessings, but the New Testament also speaks about curses. And that, for instance, is one of the curses, to preach a gospel different than what the Apostle Paul had preached. And we should endeavor to preach exactly what Paul has preached. Because to preach something else, as he has written in the Bible, automatically places you under a curse. And the Apostle Paul was preaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. If you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and also in chapter 15 of 1 Corinthians, 
Paul was summarizing the gospel that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture, that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. So he is preaching the death, burial and resurrection of Christ. He was preaching repentance, hallelujah. There's many other themes that you can find in all the Pauline letters, all the apostles of the apostle Paul, but also we should not disregard the apostles of Peter, James and John and Jude. They are also very, very important, even the Gospels. So we should not preach something that was not presented in the Bible. Yes, because we put ourselves under a curse. And many people are being deceived today by the so-called prosperity gospel. And they are being convinced that if you, the more money you can donate to the church, the more blessed you will become. Now, that is not always the case. God does say in the book of Malachi chapter uh, 3, verse 10, that you should bring all the tithes into the storehouse so that there may be food in his house. And God says that we should try him in this, that he would not open the windows of heaven and pour out a great blessing upon us. But God did not say that this blessing would be money in return. No. Uh, paying your tithes is an act of, the, of obedience, yes. And whenever we are obeying God, <coughs> we will also reap the fruit thereof. But just because you are donating money does not guarantee money back in return. No, not at all. We see, for instance, God promising uh, in the book of Exodus that we should obey our father and our mother. And then God says that you will prolong our days upon the earth. That is also repeated in Ephesians chapter 5. So God promises, for instance, that if you obey your parents, that God will give you a long life. But God did not promise through Malachi that if you pay your tithes, that God would give you more by money back in return. But God did say that he would bless you, that is for sure. And we see uh, throughout the Bible, there were people that were blessed. Look at Joseph, for instance, in the book of Genesis, chapter number 39. The Bible says that Joseph was a prosperous man. He prospered. But we see that for 13 years of his life, he went through many difficulties. We see that he was betrayed by his own brothers and cast into a pit. We see that after that he was sold. And we see that he ended up in Egypt. And even in Egypt we see that he was falsely accused by the wife of Pharaoh's servant. That uh, he wanted to rape her. And he was cast into prison and he was innocent. <coughs> but we see through everything that Joseph went, the Bible says that the Lord caused him to prosper. The Lord even blessed the house of Pharaoh because of Joseph. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean during that span of 13 years that uh, Joseph had a lot of money. But Joseph definitely faced many difficulties. But because the Lord was with him, the Lord caused him to be blessed in every aspect, in every difficulty the Lord was with him. Whether it was this woman accusing him falsely, we see that it sent him to prison. But in prison, the Lord used him to interpret dreams. Hallelujah. And the Lord really allowed him to find favor in the eyes of Pharaoh. And we see that through all the difficulties, God delivered him. God's presence was with him and eventually got elevated to become second in command in Egypt. Yes. So there are many other examples that we can look at in the Bible. <coughs> but... Wealth and uh, riches is not always a sign that God is with you. It can be a sign, but not at all times. So we should be vigilant and not allow ourselves to receive or to preach another gospel contrary to the one that Paul was preaching. Now Paul was preaching a repentance, hallelujah. Peter was preaching a repentance. Even on the day of Pentecost, they said, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now the Holy Spirit in itself is the blessing, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is the blessing. It is the promise that was made, hallelujah, the promise of the Father. And if we go back to the book of Galatians chapter 3, we see that the Apostle Paul was also making a reference to the promise that was made to Abraham, hallelujah. And we also today are heirs of the promise. And the promise is that God would give you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit itself is the blessing. It is God himself indwelling you. The Holy Spirit is not the third person of the Trinity or another God. The Holy Spirit is God himself, hallelujah. God is a spirit. The Bible says in John 4 verse 24 that God is a spirit. And those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And the Holy Spirit is the spirit of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So to have the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, is to have the blessing, is to have God indwelling you, hallelujah. 
God leading you, God guiding you, God protecting you, God surrounding you, God being with you, hallelujah, and God being in you. There's no greater blessing than that to have God himself with you, praise the name of the Lord. And that is the blessing, hallelujah. And that blessing also comes with obedience, hallelujah. The Bible says in Acts chapter 5 that God gives his spirit to those that obey him. And if you want to obey God, you need to believe the gospel. Hallelujah. You need to accept the gospel. Jesus says in Mark 16 verse 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, but he that does not believe shall be condemned. John chapter 3 verse 36, the Bible says that he that shall obey the Son of God, hallelujah, the Bible says that he that shall disobey the Son of God, the, the wrath of God that remains on him. If we go to John chapter 3, verse 36, I just want to read that scripture for you for a moment. There we see once again the comparison being made for obedience and disobedience. The Bible says that he that believeth on the Son have everlasting life, and he that believeth not on the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God remain abideth on him. So yes, it's very important that we must obey the Son of God. The Bible says in the book of John chapter 2, when Jesus was at this wedding in Cana, we see that uh, Mary was saying, whatever he says unto you to do, that you must do. Hallelujah. And that should be the attitude of the Christian, the attitude of the believer, that whatsoever Christ tells you to do, that you must do. Hallelujah. And the Bible predicted in Deuteronomy 18 that God would raise a prophet likened unto Moses. And in Acts chapter 3, we have the confirmation that Jesus was that prophet. Hallelujah. And God said in Deuteronomy 18 that whosoever shall not hearken unto that prophet, that he shall be cut off among his people. Yes, to disobey Jesus is to bring a curse upon yourself. The Apostle Paul was writing in 2 Corinthians 13, and he was writing to the Corinthians that curse is he that does not love the Lord. So that is also another curse in the New Testament. If you don't love the Lord, then the Bible says you are cursed. If you're preaching another gospel, the Bible also declares you to be cursed. Now, if you really love the Lord, then you will obey him. And if you go to the book of John, chapter number 15, we see that is what the Lord Jesus was teaching yes if any man loves him that he will keep his commandment praise the name of the lord and if you really love the lord then you will show it in your actions the bible says in john 15 verse 10 if you keep my commandments you shall abide in my love even as i have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love yes so if we really love the Lord, then we will obey the Lord. And if we obey the Lord, we bring blessing upon ourselves. We bring God's favor upon ourselves. But if we do not love the Lord, or if we do not obey the Lord, we bring disobedience upon ourselves. Now, beloved, that is the summary this morning in a nutshell, what the blessing and the curse is all about. The Bible does speak about those that are cursed. Yes, if you read Matthew chapter 25, the curse, they will go into the fire that was prepared for the devil and his angels. But the blessed shall go into the kingdom of their father. So there is consequences for the blessed and there is consequences for the curse. There's an eternal destination for the blessed and there's an eternal destination for for the curse and you need to make a choice as we've read in Deuteronomy 13 this morning's introductory scripture that Moses was telling the people that he's holding a blessing and curse before them life and death and he was telling them to choose life so that they can live so the choice was given to them it was placed into their hands to decide whether they wanted to live or whether they wanted to die and I say also unto you, the listener this morning, choose life that you may live. Choose Christ that you may live. Accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior. Now, many people have accepted the church as their place of fellowship, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you should accept Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior. And that is what matters. Many people have been members of a church for many years, but they have not fully embraced the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and as their Savior. Now, all of us must belong 
to a church. We must go somewhere to fellowship. The Bible teaches us that it's very important also. We cannot cast it away and say it's not necessary. No, it is essential. It is necessary, yes. But what is very important is, is that we should have a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what matters at the end of the day, people, that you should know your God. Hallelujah. That is what counts. That is what matters. You must know your maker. Hallelujah. You must know your savior. And if there's anyone out there this morning in the radio land that has not yet accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their own personal savior, you can bow your eyes, your, your head and close your eyes with me wherever in the world you are and just pray with me a moment. Dear Lord, thank you for giving me an opportunity that I can listen to your word. You have presented unto me the blessing and the curse. I pray, Lord, that you will bless me. I come to you with a humble heart and I repent of my sins. I pray that you will forgive me and cleanse me of my sins and my iniquities. I accept you as my Lord and as my Savior. I pray that you will make me a new creation and that you will fill me with your spirit and help me and teach me to walk in your ways. I ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, if you've prayed that simple prayer, I believe that you've accepted the Lord Jesus as your own personal Savior. And if you would like to continue your walk with the Lord, you can contact me on 078-721-9191. 078-721-9191. If there's any pastors or preachers that would like to invite me over to their assemblies, wherever in the world you are, you can also contact me in on that same number. And may the Lord bless you and be with you. And thank you for all our listeners that were tuned in this morning. And as I go off the air, we listen to this song again now i have everything may the lord bless you until the next time in jesus holy name amen i had nothing but heart Oh, and trouble I was living my lifetime in vain yes I was I had nothing but doubt oh and confusion But now I have everything. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, yes. I have everything. Oh, that I need to make me happy. Yes, I do. I have Jesus. And he'll show me. The way. Yes, he has saved me, and he gave me life eternal. Yes, he did. And now I have You know you can make.